Although Michael Jackson passed away in 2009, he's still making tabloid headlines over a decade later. His memory has lived on through his music, hologram versions of him, and even through the properties he left behind. Drive in and forget about all your problems. You were in Neverland. It was a fantasy. The days were filled with magical childhood adventure experiences. Playing tag, watching movies, eating junk food anything you could ever want. Of course, there's the infamous Neverland Ranch where Michael created his own amusement park, the Holmby Hills mega mansion he spent his final days, and much more. We'll be taking a look at where the legendary Michael Jackson used to call home, even his first LA spot. Do you guys know which house that is? Stay tuned and I'll show you. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Michael Jackson was a singer, songwriter, and dancer dubbed the king of pop and regarded as one of the most significant cultural figures of the 20th century. Honestly, the man is a legend and will always be considered one of the greatest entertainers in the history of music as well. He popularized crazy dance techniques like the moonwalk, his music has influenced artists across genres, and his contributions to everything from music to fashion and more made Michael a global figure in pop culture for more than 40 years. Getting into Michael's net worth is slightly confusing because although the singer was super wealthy and continued to make millions after his death, they said Michael was a millionaire who had lived like a billionaire and died in debt. But post-passing, Michael topped Forbes' list of highest paid dead celebs of 2018, raking in $400 million just that year. One thing we know Michael blew a ton of money on was his Neverland Ranch, outfitting the property with a zoo, theme park, train station, and more. But that's not the only one of his homes we're gonna look at. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this time looking at where the king of pop, Michael Jackson, once called home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Of course, even Michael Jackson had to start somewhere. This wasn't where the Jacksons were born, but it was the first fancy home the family would live in during their climb to success. In 1969, just as the Jackson 5 group was starting to hit it big, Motown founder Barry Gordy rented a house in West Hollywood for the family to live in. At the time, Michael's father had been living in various LA area hotels with Michael's brothers, while Michael spent a month staying with Diana Ross. This home allowed for the family to be brought together. The Mediterranean style home boasted 2,962 feet of living space with four beds and four baths, as well as a gorgeous view of Los Angeles. The new living room alone was twice the size of Michael's childhood home back in Indiana. But although they liked their new home, the Jacksons wouldn't stay long. Just after seven months of moving in, they relocated to another leased home because apparently they would make too much noise with their music. Either way, it was Michael's first experience with a fancy LA home. Although Michael hopped around Los Angeles homes and lived in some beautiful places, we can all agree his dream house was his Neverland Ranch. Sycamore Valley Ranch, as it was named, is famously known as Neverland and is a developed property in Santa Barbara, California, on the edge of Los Padres National Forest. It's known for being Michael's home and private amusement park from 1988 until 2005. Michael bought the place for an unknown amount, some sources claiming $19.5 million, while others suggest it was closer to $30 million. He named it after the fantasy island in the story of Peter Pan, a boy who never grows up, and it spanned a whopping 2,700 acres of land. There was a French Normandy style main house which was absolutely beautiful, full of wooden and brick accents and a cozy vibe. It spent 12,598 square feet with 6 bedrooms and 9 baths. Michael had an impressive first floor master suite complete with not one but two master baths. The house is nestled between landscape gardens and a 4 acre lake with waterfall if you can believe it. Not to mention the amazing mountain views you get from the property too. As you can see from the photos, the main house is far from the only structure on the property. There were three separate guest homes, a 5,500 square foot movie theater with stage, barns, animal shelter facilities, corrals, and even a maintenance shop. And one of the most memorable structures from Neverland has got to be the Disney themed train station. Living here for over 15 years, Michael made the place into something really special so it's no wonder he blew so much of his fortune on creating it. He had three railroads attached to that iconic train station with a steam local locomotive named after his mother Catherine and two coaches. There was another narrow train and a custom made private electric train just for Michael's own children. There was also a ferris wheel, carousel, zipper, octopus, by the way my least favorite ride ever, I've had so many traumatic experiences, a 
pirate ship, wave swinger, roller coaster, super slide, bumper cars, and an arcade. Elsewhere on the property, you'll find a petting zoo, a dance studio, 14-foot lagoon-style pool, outdoor barbecue, tennis court, and staff facilities. Honestly, as much as that is, I'm probably still forgetting something. Bottom line, Michael really put so much work into Neverland and literally had everything you could imagine on the property. Despite all of that, post Michael's passing, it's been a hard sell. There are many theories as to why, one of which being the bad press the ranch received at one point, and of course, it's also crazy expensive. As of 2020, the ranch has been pulled off the market after failing to sell for almost five years, once being listed at a massive $100 million. It's currently co-owned by Colony Capital and the estate of Michael Jackson and is on and off again for sale. It's reported that Colony uses this ranch as an investor retreat and to entertain celebrities. Before we look at the final mansion of Michael Jackson in Los Angeles, he also lived in this Vegas home from 2007 until the year he died, 2009. This has been dubbed the Thrilla Villa and it's pretty unique inside to say the least. It was one of Michael's last known residences, renting it out for a couple of years with his three children. Most recently, it was on the market for 9.5 million but it's unknown how much the King of Pop paid in rent. The Vegas mansion sat on 1.7 acres of land, inside spanning over 16,000 square feet with seven beds and more than 10 baths. The estate welcomes you with a massive iron gate and cobblestone paved circular driveway. It's decked out in a posh old world design, inside with high ceilings and expansive common areas. A salon features a massive stone fireplace and glass chandelier, while a foyer and bar leads to a courtyard with fountain. The main master suite occupies the entire Entire top floor and still has the original mirrors Michael used to rehearse his famous dances in. Among the many larger than life features of the mansion, there's a two story, 74 seat medieval chapel with hand painted sky scene and crown of thorn chandelier. Honestly, I think this home is my fave so far because it reminds me of a castle. Although Michael lived in that Vegas home, he passed away in Los Angeles, and the other mansion where he spent his final days was located in Homey Hills, LA, an elite neighborhood home to Kylie Jenner and the previous Playboy Mansion. Michael was renting this huge mansion for a whopping 100k in 2009 and it was actually built by famous mega mansion developer and father to Gigi and Bella Hadid, Mohammed Hadid. The residence spanned over 17,000 square feet and was built in a French chateau style. The home boasted 7 beds and 13 baths but considering Michael died here it also left the mansion with a pretty dark history. While well, coming from someone who believes in ghosts that is. The elegant and sophisticated estate has a grand double height entry with winding staircase and chandelier, wood paneled library with fireplace, home screening room, and countless other charming spaces throughout. Not to mention it was complete with an elevator, spa with gym, wine cellar, and even a guest house with stained glass doors. Outside on the one acre plus grounds, there was also a pool. Michael stayed here before launching his world tour until his untimely passing in the home's master bedroom. Considering the mansion's eerie history, it was a tough sell, but finally ended up selling for $18.1 million in 2012, well below the original asking price. What do you guys think? Would you live in this Homeby Hills house or too haunted for your liking? Well, I think that brings our Michael Jackson house tour to an end. We got to see some of his extravagant residences, including his villa in Vegas and of course Neverland. Many of his estates also had old world charm, which I loved about the design. I want to know what you guys thought of the King of Pops properties. Which was your fave? Would you live in these mansions despite their histories? Well, be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.